Hey guys, Justin here from Tin Man Electronics. BAM! In episode 3, I soldered a circuit board with lead-free solder. And in episode 1 of Tin Man Electronics, I uh, assembled the Elenco power supply that I have just over here. And there was this circuit that I said, oh yeah, yeah, you know, it's just application note circuit and then I looked at it and I was like oh I don't actually know 100% what this is doing so I did some research I found a really good cute circuit to build and that's what I did in episode 3 and now I'm gonna test it out and show you guys what it's for I'm gonna show you how to get more current out of your 7805 or out of your linear voltage regulator because you might always have wanted to build a power supply just like me I want to build my own power supply but to do it simply sure you could get one amp you could easily make a one amp power supply using the application note circuits inside the data sheets but you get that because that's all a little TO220 package can handle now using an outboard transistor which I will show you guys you could get more current because then you got your voltage regulator is sourcing current and your outboard transistor is also sourcing current. So basically you could use two components to source the current instead of just one because if one component sources all the current that's the one that has to dissipate all the heat as well. So just splitting the the thermal load across different components. So let's get right into it. So here is the schematic for the Elenco power supply. In episode one I checked if this was going to be just like a simple application note circuit and sure enough most of it is because we got the LM317 programmable linear voltage regulator and its counterpart the LM337 which is the negative voltage version of the LM317 but at the bottom over here you could see we've got the LM7805 a transistor another transistor some resistors and 5 volts out so what's that all about? Because this is sure not a uh, application note circuit. We've got a pass transistor from our input to the output, kind of kind of running parallel with our 7805. And then we've got another smaller transistor. And what this transistor here, the pass transistor, is actually called, it's uh, we sometimes refer to it as the outboard transistor. This is the guy that lets us boost our current, our output current, without frying the 7805. And this other section of the circuit here is just simply just current limiting. Now how this works as a whole is the first amp that you start supplying current comes from the 7805 because the 7805 is definitely capable of handling one amp if it's heat synced. So it does that. And then once you exceed that, your outboard transistor turns on. That's the whole point, is that the outboard transistor is a current booster. It, it kicks in after you hit a threshold. So after you supply one amp and you, you need more, the outboard transistor will jump in and supply the rest of the current. Now the current limiting makes it so that if you're supplying too much current uh, through the, the outboard transistor, it will take away some of the current that it's feeding and put it through the 7805 so that you don't fry anything. I'm actually going to simplify this circuit a little more. I'm going to give you the schematic and then that's the circuit that basically I assembled in episode 3. And I'm going to test that out, show you guys how it works, the outboard transistor, because it is one amazing thing. If you want to make your own power supply, throw in an outboard transistor. It's super easy and uh, it'll really boost your current up. So let's uh, ch take, a, take a look at the schematic. Okay, so here's my circuit. It's a simplified version of the other circuit and I've got the LM7805 right here, right in the middle. So I've got, let's say like a seven volt input for the dropout voltage and then I've got my sense resistor. So, very simple. As current flows through the 7805 and to the load, which is gonna be right here, the sense resistor starts dropping more and more voltage and uh, that's because it's got a, a resistance right and so as more current goes through it you get more voltage and then when this voltage across this resistor exceeds 0.7 volts just like the emitter base voltage drop 
of a PNP transistor, it will turn on. This transistor is going to turn on and start conducting current. And I don't have any power PNP transistors, so I'm just going to use the general purpose 3906 and just show you the concepts. But this could be applied if you have any PNP power transistors, like a, a TIP, not a TIP120, but its counterpart, the PNP version of the TIP120. Or uh, even the resistor, they, uh, the transistor they use here, the 2N6124, you could build this. Okay, so here's the, the circuit from episode 3 that I built. There's actually two of the same circuits, so we're only using one because they're the same circuit. And I just strapped it onto a breadboard so I could put in a resistor over here. A load resistor. So I've got my voltage input coming from the Elenco power supply that goes to the the uh, the voltage input of my circuit board. I got my regulator, the 7805 right here. I've got the outboard transistor, the 3906, just chilling right here with a, a bulk capacitor just to, to have some input bulk capacitance. And that's it. And then I got my sense resistor right in between there. So uh, let's do some measurements. Okay, so I've actually got a sheet full of test specs just to show you guys. I'm not going to show you the sheet because it's just a couple things for me to measure out just to prove the concepts of this outboard transistor. So first of all, I've got this 330 ohm resistor that I just stuck in there. I'm measuring the current through it, which I expect to be about 15 milliamps because it's a 330 ohm resistor on a 5 volt output here. And uh, sure enough, I'm measuring the current. You can't see it. It's off screen, but it's measuring at 15 Actually, why don't I just get that in there? You could mm, see that at 15.3 milliamps. Now back to the circuit. The voltage on the load, I've got the multimeter here. I'm just going to measure the voltage on my load. And it's showing 4.95 volts. So that's, that's like 5 volts. That's good enough for me. Right on. See? So now we got a 5 volt regulated output. I'm going to scope it with the oscilloscope later, but as far as I know, this is a regulated output coming from the 7805 drawing 15 milliamps for this resistor. Or just for your guys' reference, I'm inputting 7 volts in. And I got 5 volts out with that 330 ohm resistor. Okay, so I'm just going to measure the voltage drop on the sense resistor. And remember, we want the outboard transistor to turn on when the sense resistor voltage drop exceeds 0.7 volts. And right now with a small load of 15 milliamps, I don't want the outboard transistor to go off. Why? Because the 7805 could still handle an amp. So let's just measure this resistor, the voltage drop I see. Sorry. So you could see the voltage drop is between 0.12 and 0.13. And like I said, this is the sense resistor, so we're seeing, uh, I said I was going to see probably like a 0.1 volt drop for the 15 milliamp load, and in reality the 7805 is actually consuming a bit of current as well. So it's, it's not going to be 0.1 on the spot, it's going to be 0.12 or 0.13, and that's what I measured. So that's, that's good until now, and the outboard transistor is still technically off because we haven't biased the... Uh, the base yet. We haven't supplied that 0.7 volts to turn that that baby on. Now let's bump up the load and see how this transistor acts when it's actually sourcing some current alongside the 7805. Okay so the 33 ohm resistor is on now so that's like a, a load current of 150 milliamps. So I'm a little close to it but I've actually found a problem with the circuit. I, I'm going to diagnose it later, probably after the credits. I'm going to do this on the oscilloscope because there's something wrong. I can't, I can't get the 150 milliamps out unless I'm bang on 7 volts. And so I'm just going to give you guys the current reading. There she is. 140 milliamps, so it's still a little low. I'd rather have it 150 for the 33 ohm resistor on, uh, on the load. But let's get back to the circuit here. So let's just measure the load voltage, which I expect to be 5, but it's not because that problem I mentioned, it's 4.7. So that's that's pretty off by uh, 0.3. That's 300 millivolts. That's not within spec of the regulator. And I actually checked the regulator schematic, and there's nothing, 
there's nothing really about there's no graphs indicating any any source of this problem that I'm encountering so I'm gonna I'm gonna check it out with the scope later just like the last test the input voltage is 7 volts now the sense resistor this time because the outboard transistor should be conducting I set it up so that it starts conducting at around 100 milliamps and this sense resistor should show 0.7 volt drop and that's that's the, like the diode drop inside the transistor so let's take a quick peek at that 0 0.74 0 0.74 volt drop bang yeah so now that we know this guy is conducting like this is this is your outboard transistor circuit it's very simple you just need a simple small sense resistor to to get a voltage drop on it and then uh, this transistor will turn on accordingly to uh, wh whatever you set it to very nice circuit so I just showed you guys how you can implement an outboard transistor in your power supply circuit just throw it alongside throw it parallel to your linear voltage regulator and you could supply more current because then you're sharing the thermal load across multiple components so if you like this video subscribe to my channel like the video give it a thumbs up or whatever it is on uh, on YouTube and uh, come and check out my website at www.tinmanelectronics.com uh, where I post all my videos from YouTube and articles and whatever else I put up I don't put up that much but I mean it's mostly YouTube videos but hey it's it's up to date and it's got more than just the YouTube channel so uh, in a second I'm gonna be troubleshooting this circuit because I mentioned that I I, I have some problem uh, getting the current out when it's not bang on 7 volts in and uh, so I'm gonna check that out with the oscilloscope but other than that my name is Justin St. Amant from Tin Man Electronics that's engineering join me in a second if you want to see this uh, troubleshooting okay so let's get right into troubleshooting this bad boy I've got to hook up the oscilloscope I'm gonna scope a couple simple points just to see if there's anything strange coming up and if there isn't I'm just gonna give it up leave it to you guys to figure it out because uh, this is actually a useless circuit because there's no power transistor on it I do not plan on using this in the future so I'm gonna just chuck it or keep it and give it to whoever wants it so I'm just gonna quickly check the input voltage and see if there's any kind of crazy ripple or crazy waveform and uh, it looks pretty clean even on DC coupling I'm just gonna swap it to AC coupling and uh, and really zoom this up so we could see any kind of like I said crazy ass ripple and it seems seems just fine now the next spot to scope is actually the output of my circuit so that's gonna be the 5 volts out on the uh, 33 ohm resistor and swap that back to DC coupling and see what we've got sure enough yeah we got our, our 4.7 volts rather would have it 5 volts but that's what we're trying to troubleshoot right so uh, AC couple that see if there's any kind of crazy ass noise and no we seem just fine so that's good there you go I think I actually found it uh, and it's not even using my multimeter I could find this with my multimeter uh, I checked the output of the 7805 and not the yeah directly at the 7805 and I could see it's 5 volts 5.04 volts right on that's exactly as the data sheet says and like like I said there's no graph in the data sheet that would maybe show some kind of indication of the problem I'm having here and 5.04 volts out that is satisfying so then I go down maybe there's a voltage drop across this jumper wire maybe it's bad so then I check the other side what is it 4.96 volts so maybe there is a voltage drop maybe it's just a figment of my imagination but no 4.96 that's still nominal 5 volts bang that's beautiful now go on the other side of the multimeter that I have hooked up because I'm reading current right now right and it says 140 milliamps okay so sir look at right up at the resistor 4.8 that this is where it's starting to drop this is maybe because the multimeter is not warmed up or there's just a, a decent 
resistor in there because I mean like I've had I have it hooked up to the ammeter setting and it, it must be dropping like 0.2 volts and that's crazy right now so so to fix this it, it was it's not really a fix because I mean it is the multimeter it's not the circuit the circuit is perfectly fine so right on everything I said everything I talked about and everything I bitched about during this episode is all good because this circuit is running exactly as I expected it to and the only problem was the multimeter so I actually just hooked up the current lead to the the larger current one so now I'm getting less resolution out of my reading but it doesn't matter because uh, I don't really care about the current reading right now okay so I unhooked the multimeter because it seemed to drop voltage and then I'm measuring this uh, waveform again and it's showing yeah it's showing the five the five volts so this works so I'm actually just changing between the different ranges in this multimeter and I could see the voltage just drop crazy like this is this is ridiculous I gotta I gotta take a look inside this this multimeter and then swap to the other current jack the, the higher current one and then and I get a bit uh, I don't know it's just this multimeter is screwed up but it's a good it's a good board <laughs>